neither are we affiliated and and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization this school is a non-profit non-denominational religious scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal purposes, pattern and plans operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Hawaii in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958, and we all schools throughout the United States, Canada, Africa, the Caribbean, and certain other foreign countries. Our local branch school was established here in Kingston, Jamaica in the year 1988, and also our Spanish town branch in the year 1994. The Dean of the Spanish Town Branch is Dr. Donna Mitchell. The President is Dr. Leon Jack. Also in this school, we teach by the true, correct, and original name of our Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The true name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but, like, unlike, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title or creator or heavenly father Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name, a minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would show proof that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek or Latin language had any characters or letters in their alphabet which would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. And neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death, burial and resurrection, making such names as Jesus, Jah, Jehovah, impossible and incorrect renderings to the true correct name of our heavenly father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now let us view the mosaic chart and I will direct your attention. Yahweh is pure spirit and in this state is incomprehensible, inscrutable, invisible and inconceivable. Yahweh is the ultimate source, the infinite and immaculate substance. He is the limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. However, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize or depict himself because a cloud has no particular descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this orange fiery cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you how that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, there was everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, he took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being 
or a great heavenly anthropomorphic being. This is having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world erroneously called Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title can be added by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this threefold tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later on instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we go about to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Where we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives in our school and they are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, is to, in, is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinctions of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, age, or color. Third, is to investigate the unexplained spiritual law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, man must be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. For this afternoon's spiritual lecture, I would like to invite Dr. Ivan Crary to offer our prayer. And our scripture lesson will be read from Colossians the third chapter and I would like to invite Dr. Nikoya Henlon to have that scripture lesson read.
Dr. Lenore Allen is also our host, and we thank you for hosting our Zoom class today. Will you be giving us a song, Dr. Allen? Yes, thank you very much. What's the scripture reading again? Colossians, the third chapter. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. You can go ahead with the prior, Dr. Crary. Okay. Peace and Yahshua. Righteous and eternal Father Yahweh. To your son, Yahshua the Messiah. We give you thanks and praise that you give us this knowledge and understanding to learn and to understand about your purpose, pattern, and power of salvation. Open our heart and our mind. Whatsoever you have said through the speaker, we can understand. To your son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Dr. Allen, you want to go ahead with the song? Okay, thank you very much. I want to sing. This is from the Bible. It's called The, the Wedding Banquet. I cannot come. I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife. I have bought me a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excuse, I cannot come. A certain man have a feast on his fine estate in town. He laid a festive table and wore a wedding gown. He sent invitations to his neighbors far and wide. But when the meal was ready, each one of them replied. I cannot come, I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife, but she walks like a cow. I have fields and permits that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excuse, I cannot come. The master rose up in anger, called his servants by name. Said, go out into the town and fetch the blind and the lame. Fetch the peasants and the paupers, for this I have willed. My banquet must be crowded and my table must be filled. I cannot come, I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife, but with, with the appetite of a cow, I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excuse, I cannot come. Now when the poor had assembled, there was still room to spare. So the master demanded, go search everywhere to the highways and the byways and invite them to come in. My table must be crowded so the banquet can begin. I cannot come, I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now, I have married a wife. But she smells like a cow. I have fears and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excuse, I cannot come. My L has written a lesson for the rest of mankind. If we're slow in responding, he may leave us behind. He has prepared a banquet for this great and glorious day. As Yahshua beckons, be certain that you say, I sure will come, I sure will come to the banquet, be glad to come in. Thank Yahshua for saving me from a world full of sin. I will leave my commitments and never count the sum. Thanks for the invitation, I will come. I sure will come, I sure will come to the banquet. Be glad to come in. Thank Yeshua for saving me from a world full of sin. I will leave my commitments and never count the sum. Thanks for the invitation, I will come. I sure will come. Thank you, Dr. Allen, for the song. Thank you, Dr. Ivan Prairie, for the prayer. And Dr. Nikoi Enlan, you can, Yashua, you can go ahead with the scripture reading, Colossians, the third chapter. Good afternoon, brethren. Colossians, the third chapter, reading from the Holy Name Version of the Bible. If he then be risen with the Messiah, 
seek those things which are above, where the Messiah sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with the Messiah in Yahweh. When the Messiah, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetous, covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things say the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which he also walked some time when he lived in them. But now we also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but the Messiah is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of Yahweh, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as the Messiah forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of the Messiah rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of the Messiah dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to Yahweh. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, giving thanks to Yahweh the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is as it is fit in the Messiah. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto Yahweh. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fear in Yahweh. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily un as to Yahweh and not unto men, knowing that from Yahweh ye shall receive the reward of inheritance because ye serve Yahshua the Messiah. 25th and last to end the reading of Colossians 3. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. For there is no respect of persons with Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Nikoi Henlon, for the scripture lesson. Our scripture readers today will be Dr. Radcliffe Mitchell and Dr. Nikoi Henlon. And are there any first time visitors online with us today? Is Dr. Karen Martin or Dr. Marcia Clements online? I was asked to call one of those to be the first speaker. I'm not hearing a response from any of them. Dr. Donna Mitchell? Dr. Donna Mitchell? Praise Yeshua, Doc. I'm here, present. Praise Yashua, Doc. Um, I was asked to call 
either Dr. Karen Martin or Dr. Marcia Clemenson for the first speaker, but I am not getting a response from any of them. Okay, Doc, I will fill in, you know, I'm despair. If they are not available. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise, Praise Yahshua, Yahshua, everyone. Welcome to another spiritual lecture given to you by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. You know, we are a school and we are not a church. And in this school, we go about showing proof of the existence of Yahweh Elohim and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. We are thankful to Yahweh Elohim Yahshua for this opportunity so we can share bread bread share this knowledge about Yahshua the Messiah or being our savior and our only savior. So the scriptures are pointing to Yahshua. In Genesis 49 verse 10, could I have that read? Yeah, Deuteronomy 18, 15, Micah 5 and 2. So in Luke 24 verse 25, it says, um, I read those scriptures and then I'll continue. So we are going to prove that the scriptures are pointing to Yahshua. When Yahshua the Messiah came on the scene, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He's our mediator, he's our savior, and he brought salvation. Read, please. Genesis, Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and he shall be the expectation of the peoples. So it says, the scepter shall not depart from Yahuda, which is the tribe. It is predicated or predicted that he would come through that tribe. But we know that Yahshua was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, but declared to be the son of Yahweh with power by the resurrection from the dead. So is the fullness of the supernatural nature of Yahweh in bodily form but he had to manifest himself in the flesh to play out that role of salvation. Because remember that there was a falling out in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and they were cast out. So Yahweh came up with a plan for salvation that Yahshua would come down and redeem. In other words, make, hum make souls out of the humans unhurt to make, make them into angels that they are being born again in him to fill that void or that gap in his kingdom, which a third, a third were cast out. So he's replenishing a third from the earth now to fill that void in his kingdom. What he's showing now, we are showing the coming of Yahshua the Messiah in the flesh. Read on. Read the other scripture, please. Deuteronomy 18, 15, Micah 5 and 2. Deuteronomy 18, 15 says that Yahweh, our Elohim, will raise up a prophet of thy brethren in the midst of thee. So he would be coming in the midst of the week of dispensation because there is one week of dispensation. One week of dispensation and he came in the fourth, 4,000 years from Adam. He came in the midst of the week of dispensation, just like the S-U-N was placed in the sky on the fourth day of creation, Yahshua came in the midst, and that's Daniel, Daniel 9, 25, that could also be read, prophecy, prophesied of his coming in the midst of the week. But the Christians believe that he came in on a Wednesday, or he was born on a Wednesday, they don't realize that you have a, dispense, a week of dispensation. And that's what Yahweh was referring to. One day with Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Read, please. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. Yahweh, thy Elohim, will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So it says, Yahweh, our Elohim, will raise up a prophet. So Yahshua the Messiah is the true prophet. You have many false prophets who are gone out in the world, but you have one true prophet. And that's Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what the book referred to him as. And get me Numbers 12 and 6 also. Um, so it says, Yahweh, our Elohim will raise up a prophet in the midst of the of thy brethren. So he, he would be a Hebrew. And the tribe that he would be coming to is the tribe of Yahuda. 
So in Micah 512, let's have Micah 512 read, please. Micah 5 and 2. But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Yehuda, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin has been from of old, even from eternity. So in Isaiah 57, verse 15, Yahweh says that is the I and lofty one that inhabits eternity. That's why his name is eternal, his son's name is eternal, because he abides in eternity. And notice he says, um, from, from, from the days of old, even from everlasting, he's eternal. So he was Yahshua back here in the spirit, he's Yahshua now manifesting in the flesh. So Yahshua is Yahweh manifesting in the flesh. So he says, um, of, in it, Yahweh will know, it says, uh, Micah 5, Micah 5 and 2, it says, um, But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Yahudan, yet out of thee. So this is telling us the geographical location that you would be coming from. And we know that he was conceived in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem and he had his flight into Egypt. And then he came out of Egypt and then he returned to Nazareth, where he was called a Nazarene. So we know he had his, 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 his flight, conception, birth and flight, his round trip in the natural. But when you read, read um, the other scripture first, and then you're going to read um, John 1 and 1. The other scripture. Isaiah 57, verse 15. All right. Isaiah 57, 15 says, yeah, okay. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. So he says, he's the I and lofty one that inhabits eternity. So this Yahshua is the word made flesh. He is, he has an eternal spirit in that body. So in John 1 and 1, it tells us Proverbs 8.22. It tells us that after the John 1 and 1, you can read Proverbs 8.22. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim was the word. And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. So in you have the living word, the written word, and the spoken word. Who we are referring to now is the living word. So it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh, and the word was made flesh, Daniel prophecy. And the word was made flesh, and dwell among us for 33 and a half years, died, buried, and resurrected the third day, carried upon the earth for 40 days. At the end of 40 days, he ascends to his father. 10 days later, he poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in our heart. Daniel prophecy. Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. It says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Yahshua the Messiah, exactly. the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be uh, built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off without a successor to follow him. And the people- Okay, um, I wanted the one that says in the midst of the week, but three and a half years. Oh, that's that he entered, he entered his ministry at age 30, where he was baptized by John the Baptist. He entered his ministry at age 30 because he's fulfilling Adam, being placed in the garden as a 30-year-old man. He's also fulfilling the high priest who entered his ministry at age 30. The high priest was anointed at age 30. The low priest was anointed in the tabernacle back there in the wilderness at age 25. But the high priest was at 30 because Yahshua... In, Yahshua the Messiah is a true high priest. So Adam was placed in the garden as a 30-year-old man. Yahushua 
was 30 years in the wilderness, 40 years in 30 years in Egypt, 40 years in the wilderness, and 40 in Canaan's land. So he was down in Egypt as a 30-year-old man. So Yahshua is fulfilling all those 30. So he entered his ministry at age 30, and it was three and a half. Okay, the midst of the week. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Instead, he shall cause the prevalence of an abominable idol that maketh desolate even until the destruction that is determined shall be poured out upon the desolator. Numbers 24, 70. So he shall make a covenant with them for one week. And when people see that week, and in the midst of the week, did it say in the midst of the week, you would cause the oblation, the sacrifice to be seized. So in the midst of the week, Yahshua, is offered in the mid because he was made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. So his mission, he was the living sacrifice. So that's why when he was on that cross, he had to be alive because he's that living sacrifice. So in um, Revelation, he says, Yahshua says, I am he that liveth and that and was dead. So in death, he is alive. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. So in, he, was, he went on the cross, he died, he gave up his, his life in the, on the fourth dispensation in the midst of the week because it's seven dispensation and he died um, the fourth dispensation. So 4,000 years from Adam, when he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. That was the end of our world. So that was the, in the midst of the week of dispensation. So when people hear about the midst of the week and they think it's on a Wednesday, it's not referring to our week. It's referring to the prophetic week, prophetic timing, because Yahweh has sundry and ordered time. So you have a week of dispensation. That's why it says that he'll make a covenant with them with one for one week. And that is the week of dispensation he's referring to. All right. So in Daniel 9, Numbers 24. Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. Okay, so he say, a star shall come out of Jacob. So remember, we, we are saying that he came out of Jacob. That's the lineage, that's the tribe. That's what we would be coming to in the natural creation. But we must remember that he is the son of Yahweh because he's not the sperm of Joseph, nor the egg of Miriam. But he was manifested in the flesh and he was attached to the tribe of Joseph who came out of the kingship tribe. And he was also attached to Miriam who is affiliated with Elizabeth, who, who is married to Zechariah, the priest of the eighth order of Abiah, showing for that Yahshua sits as king and priest upon his throne, just like Mel Melchizedek was king and priest upon his throne. So that's showing the lineage and the role that he's going to play. All right. So there is also a prophecy in Genesis um, 24 verse 50 where it says Yahweh says you will not leave my my bones they are to take up Joseph's bone out of the land of Egypt and Yahushua was the one back there with them and when he came in his first coming as Yahushua back there he was the one who led them all the way to Canaan's land and then he took off that flesh he changed his garment right there at Timnat Sarah and he, the resurrection of that death is when he came as Yahshua the Messiah, as the word made flesh, when he resurrected from that dead. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life when he came out of that dead as Yahshua the Messiah. Read. Genesis chapter 50, verse 25. And Joseph took an oath 
of the children of Israel saying, Elohim will surely visit you and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died being 110 years old and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Okay. So the bone typified the soul and it showed show that a soul can migrate from Egypt all the way to Canaan's land being, since the savior was there, that's Yahushua, he was the savior, their savior at that time manifesting back there as Yahushua. And he was the one giving them the instruction of what, what was to be done. And he's typifying the soul, this, this bone typified a soul migrating from Egypt all the way to heaven or Canaan, Canaan's land. So um, when Yahshua the Messiah came on the scene, he had to fulfill every yard and every title. So he died and he was buried in, 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 in Joseph of Amartya new tomb. He tied up on the earth for 40 days at the end of 40 days. He ascends to his father 10 days later. He poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Read. Okay, so, um, so when Yahshua the Messiah came in the flesh now, he was confirming that he was the one back there as Yahshua walking throughout the land of Israel back there. Because when I read Yahushua 24 in his first coming, he was telling the, the Israelites back there that I took your father Abraham in Yahushua 24 verse 1. He said, I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the flood, even Tira, the father of Abraham. So when you read Yahushua 24, verse 1, you can read Yahushua 24, verse 1. Right. And Yahushua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before Yahweh Elohim. And Yahushua said unto all the uh, people, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served idols. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir, which possesses, and but Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I said Moses also. And here, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them, and afterward I brought your brought you out, and I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after you, after your fathers, with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea, and when they cried unto Yahweh Elohim. He put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And he dwelt in the wilderness a long season. So he was saying to them that I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, even Tira in old days. So in for that, he, when they when in Exodus Yahushua 24, he says they presented themselves before Elohim because that was the creator in a body manifesting back there with the Israelites. And he was the one who delivered them by the preaching of the gospel out of the land of Egypt because they were they had to take out a lamb. That lamb they had to put blood upon the two side posts, the upper door post between from a basin. They had to, they were buried through the divided water of the Red Sea and they resurrected in the wilderness and they were there for 40 years until the new birth went on over into Canaan's land. So that was the creator in a body. Now, when you read um, John 8, 56, 
in John 8, 56, Yahshua is confirming that he was the one back there. John 8, 56. John, or Yohanan, chapter 8, verse 56. Your father Abraham prayed to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Israelites unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am, I am, uh, Asher, I am. So he met Abraham, and he was referring to that in Yahushua 24, where he says, I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood. So that was the creator in a body. Exodus 33 and 11. So he, that was the creator in a body. When he, and when he came as Yahshua the Messiah, you know, that's why he says, for had he believed Moses, you would have believed me for Moses wrote of me. But Moses wrote of him as Joshua, who what we would call, who would, we would call Joshua, who was Yahshua. In Numbers 13, verse 8, the other reader can get that, and verse 16. So when Moses was invited in the mountain to have a rerun of the creation, Yahshua was his minister. He was the one who took Moses in the mountain and gave him a recapitulation, a rerun of how he created the heavens and the earth. And he saw this, the creation for seven days saw the creation for seven days and then he saw it for six days and Yahweh were rested on the seventh day and then he saw the structure and the function of the tabernacle for 33 days, a day for a year. And that tabernacle is representing the physical body of Yahshua, showing how long he would be on the earth for 33 years, one a day for a year. So he saw um, the entire creation, the rerun of everything, but that was Joshua back there. And in Exodus 24, 9 and 10, he said, then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. When he says they saw the Elohim, that was Yahshua, who you call Joshua, who transfigured and gave him the rerun of the creation. And if you look at the chart, you see the nine divine principle attribute, then you see Elohim, the panoramic vision, you see Moses, his body, and then you see him transform into the tabernacle, an intangible pattern, telling Moses that he's the came in by this threefold pattern, just like in the vision pamphlet where the founder said he saw the first atom crystallized as a proton, neutron, and electron, three but one, because there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three must agree in one. And he's standing on that blue sapphire stone, which is the earth. So what he did as Joshua, who is Yahshua, he transfigured and he gave, he took up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders. The elders, their vision was cut off. But we have Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. So you find out that Nadab and Abihu were brothers. Nadab and Abihu were brothers, and Aaron was the elder. And we see Yahshua in Matthew, the 17th chapter, fulfilling, fulfilling that principle. But we'll get there shortly. Um, so read, please. Exodus 33, verse 1. Verse 11. Verse 11. And Yahweh spake unto Moses. Use this. And Yahweh spake unto Moses. Can you hear me? Can, can yes, you everyone... sound much better. Yeah, thank you. No problem. All right. Uh, Exodus 33, verse 11. Thank you. And Yahweh spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Yahushua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the meeting tent. So that was the creator in our body, Exodus 24, 17, Numbers 13, verse 8, and verse 16. So you notice he was, Moses was consulting with Yahushua, or Yahshua, which is the correct pronunciation, Yahshua back there. And he was Moses' minister, and he was just 30 years old 
Moses was 80 years old when he got the vision. Sure, this got to be the creator in a body because Moses would have thought that Moses would be the elder. And you find out that he was 30 years old right there and he was Moses' minister. When he said, come up in the mount and be, be alone, he was the one inviting Moses up in the mountain to give him the rerun, the recapitulation or the rerun of the creation. Uh, in 1490 BBY. Read this. Yes. Uh, Exodus 24, sandwich in verse 17, from verse 16. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yahweh was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went up into the mount of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. His minister. What's the part that says when Moses rose up? Exodus 24, verse 13. And 24, verse 13. Yes. And Moses rose up and his minister, Yahushua, and Moses went up into the mount of Yahweh Elohim. So Yahshua was Moses' minister, just like he's our minister today. And he says Moses rose up because he was the one who was telling him, come up alone and be there and be in the mount. So he was the one inviting Moses up in the mount to give him the rerun of the creation of heaven and earth. And when you read Numbers, Numbers 20, Numbers 13, 13 verse 8 and verse 16. It says, of the tribe of Ephraim, of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshua, the son of Nun. Dr. Kidler said it's Oshua. Verse 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to survey out the land or spy out the land. And Moses called Oshua, the son of Nun, Yahoshua. That's why when Yahshua the Messiah came in John 5, 46, he said, for had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me, for Moses wrote of me. It could not have been Jesus Christ because there's no Jesus Christ in Moses' writing. Moses wrote from Genesis to Deuteronomy and there's no mention of Jesus Christ. He wrote about Yahshua and that's what he, who he wrote about in Numbers 13, verse 8 and verse 16. That was the creator in a physical body manifesting back there. So when Yahshua the Messiah came in, in John 1, 41, Philip found it Nathaniel and said, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and in the prophets did write Yahshua of Nazareth. So how could a man live for 1,500 years? And Moses was 1,500 years before Yahshua the Messiah. Yet Philip find it Nathaniel and said, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and in the prophets did write of Yahshua. Of, could you read it? John 1, 41. John chapter 1, verse 41. Uh, it's, 45. 45, yes. It says, uh, Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Yahshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Romans 2, Romans 1 and 2. No, he's saying um, he's the son of Joseph. But we know that Yahshua the Messiah in John 1, 13, he says that no, no man have ascended up into heaven or descended from heaven, but the son of man who read, who is in heaven. So you find, not that, the scripture before. So you find out that Yahshua is the one who was back there in a physical body. He's the one walking down the age and dispensation of time. And that's why Moses wrote five books. Moses and John the Revelator wrote five. Because Moses is seeing the purpose of Yahweh unto salvation from the beginning to the end. 
And John is seen from the end to the beginning, Matthew 17 after that. So Moses wrote, in the beginning, Yahweh of his vision, Yahweh alone created the heavens and the earth. Who's showing Moses this? That is Yahshua as the author. That's right under that figure of Elohim, you see A. And if you say he's the, he's the author, and at the end, with John, he's the finisher. B is the beginning, E is the ending. C is the creator, and D is the destroyer. So the same man who is the author, the same man is the finisher. So is the purpose of Yahweh unto salvation from start to finish. Here is he is alone and he divested himself of his glory. And you find out that he's naked, he's standing on the blue, the, the sapphire stone which represents the earth. And he has wasted his substance in creating the creation. But if you look at John the Revelator's account, you find out that the earth is consumed and he's, no, he's now closed. He's standing in the full length of the pattern. Read, please. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Joshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Yeshua, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Israel. Okay, so Matthew the 17 chapter is the fulfillment of Exodus the 24 chapter. So in Exodus the 24 chapter, we see, we see Yahushua was the one instituting and Yahshua the Messiah is the one fulfilling. So that's the reason why the Israelites saw him and they said, looking unto Yahshua, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. When I read 1 Corinthians 10, one to four, he said that they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat that same spiritual meat and they drank of that spiritual rock that led them. And he says that rock was the Messiah. Now in Revelation one and five, it shows that he was the Messiah back there as the author. He was the Messiah back there in heaven and he is still the Messiah. So when you, when you look at Exodus 24, we, the, the colon there, you know that you'd have to insert the six days of creation. So in the fulfillment, it says after six days. So there's a correlation with a six day principle in the, in the institution. There's a correlation with the six day principle in the fulfillment. After six days, Yahshua taken Peter, James and John in a high mountain and he was transfigured. So what he did, he took off the flesh just like as he did back in, in, as the author. In Exodus 24 chapter, he took off the flesh and he gave Moses the rerun of the creation because he was the one who transfigured into the tabernacle. He transformed into Elohim first. Then he transformed into the intangible pattern. Then he transformed into the, that's a transfiguration as the author. And that's the reason why when he was on the cross, he said it is finished when he was crucified, confirming that he is the finisher. So he was the one who was carrying the purpose of Yahweh from start to finish. Read. All right, linking there. Uh, very quickly, Exodus 24, verse 16. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. It says, And after six days, Matthew 17. Yashua Five it. minutes now. Yashua take okay. a piece of James and okay. John, his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Okay, thank you. Dad. So you find out that when he, there was a transfiguration back there with Moses, because he had to transform into the, 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 um, into Elohim and then into the tabernacle, then the creation came out of him. 
So the, that's why he had to fulfill um, what happened back here in Exodus 24 in Matthew, the 17th chapter. And he said, then went to Peter, um, Yahshua took up Peter, James, and John. James and John were brothers, and Peter was the elder, just like in, in, the, in the institution. And to correlate some of the things, and there were 70 elders here in the fulfillment. Notice he says 70 chosen mountain. So you have a principle of six days, you have a principle of six days in the institution, a principle of six days in the fulfillment. You have a 70 elders, you have 70 chosen, chosen mountain. You have elders, um, Moses, then went to Moses. Verse nine. Then, yes. then went to Moses and Aaron. The Aaron is the elder. I just call it in the elders and the brothers, elders and the brothers in the fulfillment. Um, and you find out that, that yes, that's, that's enough. Here, that. of so Yahshua, Yahshua is our minister. So you have 70 chosen mountain. So the same thing is happening here. You have 70 elders back there. So the, Yahshua is the one who is revealing, giving the, the understanding of the vision and the revelation. So when Moses saw the rerun of the creation and he wrote, in the Genesis, that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. No one knew who that serpent was until John the Revelator revealed that serpent showing forth that is the author and the finisher giving the vision and the revelation. That's the point I'm making. Because Moses saw in the vision the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. And without the revelation, if the finisher didn't give us the revelation, we would not have known that the serpent is that old dragon the devil and Satan is the one with the many names. And just like the mark was set up on Cain, no one knew that mark is was in the vision it was given in Genesis um, 3, 14, Genesis 4, verse 14, Yahweh set a mark upon him. But no one knew what the mark was. That was the vision. The revelation of the vision is um, John having the revelation, Yahshua gave him the revelation in number and in Revelation 13, verse 18, that is his 666. No one knew what that number is, was. So just to do show some correlation that the vision and the revelation, the author and the finisher, they are one and the same. So the one, the man who instituted, the man is, is the one who is fulfilling. And Yahshua the, back there as Yahushua was the creator in a body, and he's the same one as the creator in the body in a body now. So the Acts of Romans 2, where it says he was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, but declared to be the son of Yahweh with power by the resurrection of the dead. So we... Romans chapter 1, verse uh, 3. Concerning his son, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, who was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of Yahweh with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So you see, no, it says um, he is declared to be the son of Yahweh with power by the resurrection from the dead. So he was on a natural body, he's raised a spiritual body. There, there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial. So that's why I that asked for John 3, 13, because Yahshua the Messiah is Yahshua from heaven. That was Yahweh manifesting in the flesh. All right, then John, can... chapter 3, verse 13. Yes. John 3, verse 13. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, who is in heaven. So it's declared to be the Son of Yahweh with power by the resurrection from the dead. So he is Yahshua the Messiah from heaven. All right, you can read Colossians 1, 26, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his son, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations of Gentiles of the world, who is Yahshua the Messiah in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, 
that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. All praises unto Yahweh, Elohim, and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Donna Mitchell. And at this time, I'd like to invite our superintendent, Dr. Irvin Grant, to be our second and final speaker. Dr. Grant, you may go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Good evening. Uh, he, <laughs> Vin wanted me to take his place for some reason. No problem. Go ahead, Dr. Frank Lewis. Okay, Thank Revelation you. 1 and 1, it says, the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, which Yahweh gave unto him, to gave Yahshua the Messiah, He's the revelation. It's all about him. Gave unto him what, uh, what must shortly come to pass. You understand? Uh, I'm kind of cutting it up. I want the red letters. Give me red letters. Uh, what is he saying there in red letters in the first chapter? Do you have that? Yeah, yeah I'm slow. I'm getting to it. Sorry. No, it's uh, other people. The scripture we are supposed to get it. You can get the charts. Okay. I know, red just get the part that has the red. Oh. Revelation chapter one, verse eight. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. So you say that? I am Aleph and Ta, the beginning and the ending. And that's what she was just going through. Because in Hebrews 12 and 2, it says, looking unto Yahshua who's the author and finisher of our faith. So you saw her talking about Yash, you know, when Moses has a vision, he sees Elohim pattern, Elohim creation. John sees Elohim pattern, Elohim creation, showing that they're seeing the self same thing. And under Elohim, you got an A, and under Elohim, you got an F where John is. And she was showing that Hebrews 12 and two, looking under Yahshua, who's the author and finisher of our faith. Then you got the pattern, you have a B under it on the Moses side, and then you have the pattern, you have an E under it showing he's the beginning and the ending. Then you got a C under Yahweh Elohim because he's the creator, and then you got a, a D under him because uh, he's the destroyer. He'll damn you if you don't believe him, but it's easy as A, B, and C. Okay, read on the next thing that has red letters in Revelation first chapter. Revelation. Now, did you see on the chart there? He had first and last uh, under Yahweh Elohim, uh, Moses having him in the vision, and at the end, so that's first and last. I think that's also Isaiah 44 and 6. Okay, you see how you got first, and you see the arrow pointing from Moses towards John, and then John, you got last, and you have the arrow pointing back. It's on top of, right beside the creation by the pattern. First and last, you see that? What does Isaiah 44 and 6 say? Verse 6. Thus saith John, the king of Israel, and his redeemer, the savior of the ruler of all men. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no Elohim. Yeah, there ain't no other El no other Elohim. But now, in First John 5 and uh, 20, it says, We know that the Son of Yahweh is come and have given us understanding that we may know him that is true. We are in him that is true, 
even in his son, Yahshua Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. So when he gives that vision to Moses, everything Moses writes down in detail from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, that have to be the Holy Spirit to bring it back to his remembrance. No way a man could write down all that in great detail like he did. And it all means something. We didn't know that until we came down to this school. And same way of John on Alapatmos. You think hey, he just has a super memory to remember all that stuff he wrote in those 22 chapters and how detailed it is? Okay, let's go to Revelation where the next red letters are. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand on me, saying and, unto me. And I'll say this uh, uh, really, uh, read 1 and 12. Right, verse 12. And I turned to see the voice. That with me. He's hard to hear. I'll, re I'll read it. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Yeah, so you see how he's got a seven golden candlestick there or, or seven branch lampstand. And so, uh, so now why has he got that? Because it's the same. Now they don't have this in red letters, but he said he turned to see the voice. And so that was Joshua that was speaking to him in the red letters, you understand? But they don't understand this, that the one standing in the midst of the seven branch lampstand, that is Joshua, that is Yahweh only. And that's what 1 John 5 and 20 said. We know the son of Yahweh is come and have given us understanding that we may know that we may know him that is true. We are in him that is true. Even in his son, Yahshua, the Messiah, this is the true Elohim and eternal life. So you see how Yahshua Messiah is the true Elohim? So he was Yahweh Elohim back there giving Moses all those visions. You understand? He's in a body. That's a great mystery. Uh, so he's standing in the midst of a seven branch lamb standing. And when you look at the uh, dispensation and ages, he came as Yahshua, the son of Nun, in the, four, the beginning of the fourth dispensation. And then he came as Joshua the Messiah to fulfill those things uh, as Joshua the Messiah at the end of the fourth dispensation. So you see how he's standing in, he's in the midst of those dispensations, three dispensations before he comes in and gives them the old covenant and three dispensations after he fulfills the old covenant. And then when he dies, buries, resurrects, he ascends and pours out the Holy Spirit. And that begins the, uh, his age at the top. He pours out the Holy Spirit. He pours out the Holy Spirit in the fourth age. See, the whole, the high priest was anointed at the door, which is the fourth step. So here's Josh Messiah anointing man with the Holy Spirit. And John is seeing him in the midst of a seven branch lampstand. What's that talking about? You had three ages before him, before he poured out the Holy Spirit and the present kingdom age. And you got three ages after that. And we're in the same age when he saw him in the midst of a seven branch lampstand. We're in the same age that he's pouring out the Holy Spirit. Uh, John is 63 years after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. And you had 63 generations from Adam to Yahshua Messiah, but he brought an end to the flesh. When he nailed to the cross, that was the end of the flesh. And now 63 years later, John's out there to get the revelation, which is the Holy Spirit revealing uh, the law and the prophets. And that's what revelation is, is a condensed version of the law and the prophet. It's confirming Moses and the law and the prophets. Okay, let's, uh, uh, he's seven branch lampstand. What else does he say next? Uh, verse uh, 18, I am he. No, seven branch lampstand. What's the next thing it says? And in the midst of the seven branch lampstand, one like unto the Son of Man. That's Yahshua the Messiah. That's the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Now, see, just like that tabernacle, wasn't that clothed with a garment? You didn't see the pillars, bars, and boards because it was clothed with linen around the court roundabout. 
And then the most holy place, holy place was covered over with badger skins, ram skins dyed red, and goat hair. Three. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now, what the paps are, you get the tabernacle pattern. The paps are the chest region. And so the chest region, a golden girdle. See, that's correlated with the holy place. In the holy place, don't you have those vessels? The seven branch lampstand was pure gold. The table of shoe bread was wood overlaid with gold. The altar of incense was wood overlaid with gold. But they had golden crowns around the altar of incense, and uh, you had two golden crowns around the table of shoe bread. And so, going about the paps with a golden girdle, that's the chest region. See, he's showing the whole, he's revealing that Yahweh Elohim is. The archetype original pattern of the universe, just like Dr. Kinley has written on top of the Moses chart and on the cover of the Elohim book. Read. Revelation 1 14 continues. His head and his hairs were white like wood. Because you had Yahweh said he would dwell in the cloud between the wings of the cherubim in Leviticus 16 and 2. Okay. And they were led by that cloud. And that cloud stood upon. Uh, 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 that, that cloud led them all the way through the wit, uh, wilderness. You'd say, well, I don't believe that they followed a cloud. Well, uh, your brain is gray, gray and white matter like a cloud, and you follow your cloud, whatever it tells you to do, you better do it. Some, or you can make a big mess if you don't do some things it tells you to do. Read. That's right. That's no. Yeah, I'm that's in Daniel also, uh, but we're not going to read that. It's white as snow. Read. And his eyes. Or as a flame of fire. That's representing the Shekinah glory or the vision that he, uh, that he had forgiven the children of Israel sin, his eyes. Just like those two archangels, aren't those eyewitnesses? And don't they see as one? Mm -hmm. He messed up with your two eyes, didn't he? <laughs> they were seeing two different things. You understand? You have a rough time seeing and be able to comprehend them. Read. Are his feet like unto fine brass? So you see his feet, fine brass. So in the altar of incense, wood overlaid with brass, and, mm -hmm. and the uh, labor is made up of brass. Those are court roundabout things. And so his feet were as bra brass, read. As it they burned in a furnace. Yeah, that's the altar of incense. And, mm -hmm. and his voice as a sound of many waters. See, that's on the labor. So you see how everything's. Uh, he's just standing the full length of the pattern. The pattern's representing, he is the pattern of the universe. But they don't have that in red letters, but that's him. Read. Revelation 1 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And, uh, and you look at that, and if you, if, if, uh, if a person was, well, just like you see standing there, if you look at the right hand, isn't that where the seven branch lamp stand is? So in his right hand are seven stars, just like you have that seven, seven branch seven. arch. Three. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Yeah, and that's uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. It said the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful. Wow. One of the ways Dr. Kinley said it, he said, suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind on the day of Pentecost. Isn't that quick? Suddenly? Yes. It came a sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. They were uh, cloven tongues sat on them like fire. They were all filled. The Holy Spirit began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And now that's who's given us this knowledge. Same Holy Spirit is passed down to us today. Read on. And his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. Because that is the Son of Yahweh. That's the son of Yahweh that made the physical son. Yahshua Messiah is the only begotten son. That's why he was able, when he was jumped, to the sun stands out in Gibeon and moon in the valley of Agilon. Now, who can tell this? And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And have the keys of hell and of death. Now, you see how he's preaching the gospel? I was he that was a dead. I was dead. I died. And I'm alive forevermore. I resurrected and have keys of death and of hell. He's the one that can, can, can release us from the power of the satanic spirit. No matter what kind of false doctrine they teach, Yahshua Messiah, uh, he, 
He can unlock all those mysteries that you might have been thinking about all your life through this divine vision and revelation. That's the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things and bring all things back to remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. And you know that uh, the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley, how did he remember all them things? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit and brought it back to his remembrance, all the things that, that he saw and taught. He said, what really happened, he received Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what really can happen to you. You can be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit, and that's what will save your soul. No, Jesus ain't coming. He never come the first time to come back. You understand? It was Yahshua the Messiah that came and fulfilled the law and the prophets died, buried, raised the third day, tarried on airplane 40 days, making spiritual appearances. Then he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. And he still, now see, that's why John 10, 17, you might as well read that. So you get the Moses chart, please. Okay, now Yahshua the Messiah, he was, uh, as Yahshua, the son of Nun, he was 30 years in Egypt. He was 40 years in the wilderness of Sinai. And he was 40 years in the conquest of Canaan land. And he died at 110 years old. Now, here he is uh, uh, fulfilling, and he's in a physical body. See, read uh, John chapter 10, verse 17. Therefore, does my father love me, because I leave the but I might take it again. So, wait a minute. So what happened was, uh, he says, my father loved me. No man taketh my life. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. Well, when did you lay it down? When I was Joshua, the son of Nun. When did you pick it up? When I come through the loins of the Virgin Mary. You understand? See, because he died and was buried in time now, Sarah. But when he, re but you know what else he did? He was, the word of Yahweh appearing to uh, all the prophets all the way down. So he was making spiritual appearances after he uh, laid his life down. That's the same Yahweh Elohim, which is Yahshua the Messiah. These are great mysteries. And that's why in that third trip, he stayed in the tent and gave Moses that vision of the create rerun of the creation, Genesis 2. And then he shows, then he shows, uh, Moses, how that the devil deceived the Eve in the garden and the transgression that happened in the garden. He's the one showing uh, about Cain and Abel. You understand? He's the one that's showing about Noah's flood. He's the one talking about Abraham. He's the one showing. That's why he said, Abraham prayed to see my day and saw it. He's the one showing it to Moses up there. And he's not in a body. He didn't go up in the body on that third trip in Exodus, the 34th chapter. See, to show that when he dies, buries, resurrects, and ascends, he pours out the Holy Spirit. Now, also, when he resurrected, he tarried for 40 days. What's he fulfilling? That he's the one that was making spiritual appearances for 4,000 years. You know what I'm saying? So he's got to fulfill that with that 40-day fulfilling, uh, tearing on the airplane, making spiritual appearances. See, See Yahweh is spirit. Elohim is spirit and Yahshua is spirit. But we got him like he's a physical man. You understand? Uh, okay, keep reading back. Here. This commandment have I received of my father. That's right. He has the power to lay. So he's the one that laid it down and he's the one that took it up again. And when he died on the cross, that's him laying it down again and was buried. But then he resurrected a quickening or life giving spirit. See? And he's alive forevermore and have keys of death and the hell. What else we got in red letters? Well, in Revelation 1, verses 19 and 20, and the seven, right? The things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The so, mystery of the seven stars, which thou hast seen, which thou Soys in my right hand. The seven stars are the seven assemblies, and the seven 
branch lampstand, which thou sawest, are the seven congregations. No, the seven stars are the seven angels of the seven assemblies. The angels that of the seven assemblies. And the seven of branch seven... lampstand are the seven assemblies. Now, so you had uh, Yash Messiah, right thou that was, that that is, and that which is to come. That's really the vision of Revelation. Get the, yeah. When Moses had his vision, top of Mount Sinai, he was at the beginning of the fourth dispensation. Didn't he see the things that was? The physical creation come in. Didn't he the one seeing Adam and Noah and Abraham and writing all that down and the law there? So then Genesis, that's seeing the things that was. Then he saw the things that is. Yahweh wanted him to build a tabernacle there in that fourth dispensation. And then, as the previous speaker talked about in, uh, in Deuteronomy 18, 15, it said, Yahweh thy Elohim will raise up a prophet from the midst of thee, O Israel, like and unto me, him shall you hearken. Well, what's that talking about? Well, it's talking about a virgin birth. Because if Yahweh Elohim raises up the prophet, that ain't got nothing to do with no man, does it? And that's why Isaiah 714 says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now you take a King James Version, they'll say Emmanuel means God with us. Well, that don't make no sense. If it was Emmanuel God, it would be God with us, but it's Emmanuel, so it means Elohim with us. See, and that's Yahshua the Messiah in that body. And that's uh, Elohim with them. So Moses saw that which was, that it is, and that it is to come. Well, the prophets and David writing about, they're writing about the things that was, the things that is, and the things that are to come. Well, uh, what, what is Yahshua Messiah fulfilling? He's fulfilling the things that was, the things that is, and the things that are to come. You understand? Pouring out the Holy Spirit, see. He died for everybody that was, everybody that is, while he, he was living. And everybody that's going to be, that's us up here today, see. He fulfilled for everything that, he fulfilled it for everything that was, everything that is, and then that which shall be. You understand? Yeah, he resurrected for that which was, that that is, and that which is to come. So when he dies, buries, resurrects, ascends, and pours out the Holy Spirit, what's the apostle Paul and Peter and all of them going to write about? You know, uh, Paul tells Peter, said all scripture that's given by the inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction of righteousness, that the man of Yahweh might be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So he's talking about that scripture like John 5, 39, Yahshua said, search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. So, so when the Holy Spirit's poured out, the brothers went back to the law and the prophets. You read that when Paul's writing, when he's preaching the gospel. I think that might be uh, Acts 24, uh, would it be 13 or 24, 22? What's that say? Acts 24, verse 32? No. 24, either 22 or... Oh. Verse 22. And when Peter heard these things, having more. No, I don't want that. Try 14. Acts 24, verse 14. But this I confess unto thee, and after the day which they call penalty. But this I confess unto thee, but after the way which which they call heresy, so worship I, the Elohim of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Now you see how he's talking about uh, uh, the Holy Spirit's poured out. He says he's believing everything written in the law and prophets. Ain't that which was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was before he received the Holy Spirit. And have hope toward Yahweh, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. Okay, now read 26 and maybe 22. This one, and when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and say, 
when Lysias, the cha chief. No, I, don't, I don't want that. What do you want? Do. Having therefore obtained help of Yahweh Elohim, I continue unto the day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophet and Moses did say. So okay, where are you? That's 26, um, 22, I guess. You were in 24. So the 24 and, uh, okay, so you see where it says, here he is, Paul saying, having therefore obtained help of Yahweh, I continued unto this day, witnessing the both small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that the Messiah should suffer. So he's going to die, he's preaching the gospel, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. See that? See him preaching the law and the prophets, that which was? Mm -hmm. Okay, read 28, 23. I'll start at 22 here. Act 28, 22, 23. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for us concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Is that familiar in this, in this doctrine spoken against everywhere we go, even among your own family, ain't it? Mm -hmm. And it says, and when they had appointed him a day, there came to him, to many to him under his logic, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them, Yahshua, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning to evening. Did you see him preaching the kingdom? The gospel mm -hmm. of the kingdom. So he's telling them that that which was. Then he's telling them that which is. And then he's telling them that which is to come. Paul's the one talking about uh, receiving a crown of glory. You understand? Mm -hmm. Joshua has laid up for him. See? Uh, in hope of eternal life, which Yahweh promised before the world began. See? That's Titus 1 and 2. See? Uh, all right. Okay, let's go back to Revelation now. So you see that there. Oh, so Paul's writing that way. Peter's going back to the law and the prophet. That which was, that which is, that which is to come. So when Doctor Kinley has, a, what's John going to do? Same He's going to write the things which was, and you can go back to Moses and see it. The things that is, and the things that are to come. So when Dr. Kinley has a divine vision of revelation, what's the Holy Spirit going to teach him to say? That which, that which was, was. That elementary chart. You see how that elementary chart begins back there with Adam and Noah and Abraham mm -hmm. and the children of Israel come up out of the land of Egypt and, and, and the pat tabernacle pattern and Joshua fulfilling it and all those things. He's talking about that which was. And then he's going to talk about that that is that you can receive the holy spirit see uh eternal life is to know that yahweh is the only true and yeah right what you got is after his death burial resurrection what's right over yahshua's head you got heaven there see how he set up heaven and heaven go right across down through there see uh no heaven's uh, where yahshua's sitting at <laughs> see, he's the one that opened up heaven he's heaven itself heaven <laughs> And didn't it say in uh, 1 John 5 and 7, there's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And so the previous speaker was talking about John said, no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that descended, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And in John, the 14th chapter, he says, uh, you believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there's many mansions. Wasn't so, I wouldn't tell you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. Where was he? He was filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and he was in heaven. And that's exactly what happened on the day of Pentecost. He received them unto himself by pouring out the gift of the Holy Spirit. See that? Okay. All, all of Revelation 2 and 3 is in red letters. So that's Yahshua or the Holy Spirit 
speaking to those seven assemblies and having John send it to them. All right. We're not going to, can't read all those things, but uh, let's just pick uh, Revelation 2 and 9. What does that say? He said, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich and rich. I know so thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know how thou art slandered by them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now see, he said, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. This is Joshua Messiah speaking. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. You see how the Holy Spirit knows how the devil's deceiving people? And people say they, they, they say they are, they, you know, I'm a Jew. I, I'm, a, I'm a true believer and don't realize that you're of the synagogue of Satan. That was going on in that assembly there. Read Revelation 2 and 17. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the assemblies. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save in he that receiveth it. Now, ain't that what's happened here? He says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the assemblies. Now, he said that to all seven assemblies in Revelation 2 and 3. Uh, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the assemblies. To him that overcometh, Dr. Kimley say, overcome what? He said, overcome your colossal ignorance and stupidity of Yahweh's ever presence. To him that mm. overcome, will I give to, uh, to eat of the hidden manna. Isn't this food hidden? The world don't know these things we're talking about. We are truly blessed to be in this school and, and, and eat, eat, at his, eat at his Passover supper table. <laughs> and it's all you can eat truth. You understand? All you can eat knowledge. And I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth. That name, Yahshua, we didn't know that name. And neither does the world know it. Do you understand? Until you receive it. See? And the whole, that's the name of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Yahshua, the Messiah. See? Okay. Let's just read 3 and 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. Now you see that? Now this is the seventh assembly. And uh, according to the pattern, the seventh step of the pattern is the most holy place. And he says, and he's telling you what's going on in, in a man's mind when the gospel's preached. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Change. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking at our heart and mind by preaching the gospel. And Dr. Kinley used to say, when you preach blood, water, spirit, 40, you get hit over the head 40 times, you're bound to see something. <laughs> so behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, you open your heart and mind, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Now that's the true supper, ain't it? To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with, with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am also set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the assembly. Okay, that's Revelation. Uh, third, so we're up to the third chapter. Does the fourth chapter have any red letters? You can say no, no if no. it's not there. No, it's not there. Okay, fifth chapter. Well, it should be because he's the lamb slain. <laughs> he saw a lamb as if it was slain. That's Yahshua Messiah. See. Uh, he saw a strong angel with a loud voice saying, uh, who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals? 
Well, who do you think loosed the seals? It was Joshua the Messiah. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. That's Joshua the Messiah. Read six verse. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as if it had been slain. Well, who's the lamb that's been slain? Joshua the Messiah. John 1, 29, behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the, of the world. You understand? He's the one that's loosening the seals. He's the one that's uh, fulfilling the law and the prophets. You understand? Okay. Having seven head, horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Yahweh Elohim sent forth into all the earth. That's enough. Okay. Now, uh, let's just read 10 and 1, Revelation. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was upon his head, and his, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Now that's Joshua the Messiah, see? He's the sun coming. He's the, man, he's the great angel that's clothed, uh, uh, clothed with a cloud. Didn't he, didn't he lead them over to the land of Egypt? Did, weren't those children of Israel led by the cloud? See, well, who was that? See, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. The one that come down is Joshua the Messiah. Clothed with a cloud and a rainbow is upon his head, and his face, as it were, the sun. Why is that? Because he is the son of Yahweh. And his feet, pillars of fire. Ain't that the same thing they saw in the first chapter? And he, and he had in his hand a little book open. Why? Because he fulfilled the law and the prophets. So now the books, it's an open book. See, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. Uh, get the Moses chart. Why has he got one foot on the, on the earth and the other foot's on the sea? Because he's the same one that's showing the vision to Moses atop of Mount Sinai. That's the one foot on the earth. And he's also the same one showing to John in the Aegean Sea on the Isle of Patmos. Showing it's the same one. Read. Revelation 10, and, about three. And he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. That's right. Seven thunders uttered their voices. Read. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered. Now when he uttered. was about to write, what's the punctuation there? Colon. There's a colon there. The colon after right. Yeah. He was about to write. And then he hears the angel say, uh, don't write them things. But didn't we just read in the first chapter that the things he saw, he has to write in a book? Right. Well, what's the things he's not told to write about? That's Moses' vision of the creation. That's what them seven thunders are. That you know, And, and when you have a thunder, ain't that around a cloud? Wasn't Moses up in the cloud? Yes. And don't you have, you don't have thunder when there ain't no cloud around. You mm. understand? So those seven thunders is him thundering in the creation in a seven day, you know, he's seeing the same vision as Moses is seeing. That's the point. Read on. Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Right. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that so there now he should didn't be write the time same no way longer. as Moses did, but he's saying that, that he's, everything, he made those things, and all that's in the sea, all that's in the heaven, all that's on the earth, that is the creation. Read on. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, oh, when he one more thing. Wait a minute, hold on. What does the fifth verse say? 
And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. Yeah, read. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Now, why does it say that there should be time no longer? Because when Moses saw it, it wasn't in the realm of time. It was in the realm of eternity. eternity. That's why it says there should be time no longer because uh, it wasn't created in the realm of time. You might as well read uh, 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 get Ephesians 1 and 21 to get the dispensation ages. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. See, that name Yahshua is what's taken us from this age into the next one, it's, it's, which is to come. That's how great the name Yahshua is. Read on. And hath put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head of all things to the assembly, which is his body, the fullness he, of him that filleth all in all. He's the head of the assembly, which is his body that, that fulfilleth the all in all. Read on. And you hath he quickened. That's who were right. Dead in it's Yahshua Messiah says, and you hath he quickened. See, in other words, he's a quickening spirit and he can quicken you. So, and you hath he quickened, you hath he resurrected. Read. Who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Yeah, there's a spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, Steve. Uh, and, there, that, and that's what you were before you come into school, but he's able to turn you around, change your mind. You understand? And that's Joshua the Messiah. See? Read on. Among whom also we have all had our deportment in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were yeah, by we were nature. Carnal, yeah, when you were carnal minded. You, you, desire, you fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Read. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with the Messiah. By grace ye are saved. See, he's quickened us together with the Messiah. By grace, you are saved. You're saved by grace through faith. Keep reading. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah. Did you know that you were sitting in heavenly places when you're in Jamaica with the Holy Spirit? Or if you're in Brooklyn with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> you're sitting in heavenly places. Read. It's King's that County. That in the ages to come, yeah. <laughs> he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Yahshua the Messiah. That's right, read. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of Yahweh. Okay, what does two and seven say? That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us, now, did you the know Messiah. anything about ages to come before you come down to this school? You understand? We're in the fourth age, and the ages to come is age five, six, and seven. We didn't know that. You understand? But the Bible says it, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us. For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's a gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's the same thing he said in Titus 3 and 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by his mercy, 
hath he saved us with the washing regeneration and renewing the Holy Spirit. Now, some people say, now I'm just tired of you all always going back to Moses and all those kind of things. Well, we're down there at the end of the Bible in Revelation. And uh, just read, Re I'm tired of you going back to Moses. Read Revelation 20 and 1. And get the Moses. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. That's right. Uh, I saw an angel come down from heaven. Uh, get the elementary chart. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key, the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. See how that? See how those those uh, circles are all linked together? That's a great chain of events down through the law and the prophets. And then he and he's the one he saw the angel come down having the key to the bottomless pit. In other words, back there at Moses, when they were down there in Egypt, isn't he the one coming there to un, to get them out? Of, they can't get out of Egypt on their own. Just like you can't get out of darkness on your own from that satanic spirit. It takes Yahshua the Messiah to come unto you and lay hold of that satanic spirit and cast him out of you. You understand? And I saw an angel come down, uh, Moses chart, ages come down, having the key of bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Read. And he laid all on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now it happened back there with the children of Israel because when he didn't he, didn't he cast Pharaoh and his host into the Red Sea? That was laying hold of that dragon and bound him that thousand years. That day that they resurrected, that's when he was bust asunder in the Red Sea. But it's also, that's in the institution. But then the fulfillment, Yahshua Messiah comes and uh, mankind de is dead from the fall of Adam and took Yahshua Messiah to release man from his, through his death, burial, resurrection. And the day he resurrected, uh, Judas had just killed himself, so he was bound that day. And also, the scribes and Pharisees, when he resurrected, uh, they weren't out there running their mouth calling him a deceiver that day because they had those soldiers saying he resurrected, and 500 saw him at once. So that bound that devil. It ain't talking about a thousand years. It's talking about one day. Because one day of Yahweh's is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. This is the one case that the thousand years is really the day he resurrected. Read on. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Now, and Yahshua, after that he... Yahshua resurrected. And he shut those scribes and Pharisees up. They were hiding that day, uh, trying to figure out, what are we going to do? Them soldiers just came to us and said that they saw it. They saw that he resurrected. And uh, mm -hmm. so they devised a lie saying, no, you tell them that they stole his body away. And we know by this divine visual revelation, the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley said, now, you know, they didn't steal his body away. Can they steal the physical sun out of the sky? No, it's too hot to handle and too far away, 93 million miles away. If you can't steal the physical son, you ain't steal the spiritual son, his body. You understand? Uh, okay, keep reading. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, what's a little season? So you get the dispensation agents. See the little season there, when he resurrected, that's in the, in the post-Diluvian age, see? And then after that thousand years were finished, that's the day he resurrected, he was Satan was loosed a little season. See, it's uh, the fifth and sixth dispensation. It's been 1980 some years. That's a little season compared to the 4,033 years. He, he was deceiving before Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. So that's a little season, ain't it? Two days over 4,000, you know, 2,000 years instead of the 4,033. Read on. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua, 
and for yeah, the word of the Yahweh. Ones that, those were the ones that resurrected with him. See, uh, Moses Charter, wherever you got the resurrection. So Yahshua Messiah, he dies, he's buried, and then he resurrects uh, 4,033 years of souls. Those, and they're ruling in Jerusalem because in Matthew 20, um, Matthew 27, 51 said there was a great earthquake and many of the bodies of the sons which slept arose and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So, and Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 5 that 500 saw him at once. That's what shut them up when you have appeared to 500 people at once. Read. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I They're saw the ruling soul in Jerusalem, and that's judgment. It's ju the, the judgments, uh, uh, in other words, when he resurrects and gives you witnesses, you're being judged whether you believe him or not. Read on. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither is Hidal. Okay. I got to move on. Okay. Read 20 and 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Now this said is death the second and hell death. were cast into the lake of fire. You know, Mo, uh, Pharaoh and his host, they're like death and hell. They died and was buried in the Red Sea. So death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That's a type of the lake of fire, which is coming up. You understand, in other words, Yahweh overturns things. And what she's got there is the lake of fire. And that's the death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. You see how hell's not the lake of fire? Because how can death and hell be cast into the lake of fire if hell is the lake of fire? You know, a lot of people think hell's the lake of fire, don't they? Keep reading. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's right. Whoever wasn't written in the book of life, you were blotted out because you, uh, uh, because you sinned against Yahweh by calling him a liar. You're Yahshua the Messiah. Read. And I Read. saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there were no more seed. Okay, Moses chart. He sees a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there's no more sea. After they resurrected into the wilderness, there was no more Red Sea to deal with. So he's calling Egypt the first heaven and first earth. And when he's going, when they're going in the wilderness of Sinai, he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there's no more sea. Now you know that principle can overturn. Get the dispensation and ages chart. See, when Yahshua Messiah fulfilled the old covenant in uh, Hebrews 10 and 9, it said he taken away the first that he may establish the second. So when he it was, uh, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, he poured out the Holy Spirit. For the first heaven, first earth was passed away and there was no more sea. There was no more sin it carnally anymore from the fall of Adam because Yahshua Messiah has already paid the penalty for sin. He died, buried, resurrected, sin, and poured out the Holy Spirit. See, that's the same way with you. Uh, he saw when you went where I see a, I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven, first earth was passed away and there's no more sea. Doesn't your mind, isn't it completely different of when you walked into class? Yeah, it's a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven, first earth has passed away. You ain't thinking like that no more, are you? Well, I hope not. <laughs> but it's also talking about the end of this age. He's going to open, he's going to uh, uh, burn up this earth, and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And so you have to receive the Holy Spirit to be in his kingdom of immortality. Okay, keep reading. And I, and John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh Moses out of Christ. heaven. So he prepared saw New Jerusalem as coming down from heaven. Moses, yeah, you see where it says Jerusalem above there? See, that's that's Moses having that vision of the tabernacle. Uh, read on. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Didn't they bury Yahweh at the mount? Read. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, 
the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men. What's and he, he will... doing talking about a tabernacle with men back there in Revelation, the 21st chapter, because he's going the whole migratory pattern, and that's the things that was. Okay? Uh, and it says the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men and said, and he will dwell with them, not it, right? And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and Yahweh himself shall be with them and be their Elohim. Okay, and he was their Elohim, wasn't he? Now get Revelation 22 and 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of Yahweh and of the Lamb. Show me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of Yahweh, just like you have that cerebral spinal fluid that flows from the third and fourth ventricles. You understand? And that's the same way the River Jordan flows. Uh, and Yah, she's showing there, you got that pure river of water life flowing, all the, flowing from from uh, the Garden of Eden all the way down through Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, our Holy Spirit. So our pure, uh, that pure river water life is the Holy Spirit. He that believes in me as the scripture has said, how his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thus he spake of the Holy Spirit. Read on. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which okay. bare 12 manner fruits. So on both sides of the river was there a tree of life. So Yahshua Messiah, he was the tree of life and the tabernacle on, on the wilderness of Sinai side of the river. And then when he went over to the other side of the river, the tabernacle stood over there and the temple. So that's a tree of life on both sides of the river. Now get dispensation ages. Yahshua Messiah, when he's walking around, see the rivers representing the division point between the most holy, the holy place and the most holy place. When Yahshua fulfilled those things, he was a tree of life on this side of the river when he was walking around in a fleshy body. Then he dies, buries, resurrects, and pours out the Holy Spirit. That's a tree of life on both sides of the river. So now what's the reality of it with you? The Holy Spirit can be placed in your heart and mind by believing the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. You have a tree of life on this side of the river in, in the sixth dispensation. And you know what? He's going to be a tree of life on the other side of the river, which is immortal glorification in the new earth state. Uh, this is the greatest teaching on the earth. Uh, we hope you enjoyed class. And if you did, you thank Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Frank Lewis. All right. Um, we are coming to the end of another spiritual Zoom meeting for this afternoon. Lectures are held every Tuesday at Greater Portmore um, from 4 to 6 p.m. Every Thursday at the Dean's House, Dr. Donna Mitchell, from 4 to 6. Every Sunday at Scott's Place from 12 to 2 p.m. And also every Sunday right here on Zoom from 4 to 6. Also in Kingston every Wednesday from 5 to 7, every Friday from 5 to 7, and also every Sunday from 11 to 1, from 9, sorry, from 9, is it 9? 9 to 11 for Kingston. All right. So let us all stand in our hearts and in our minds and listen to the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, Yahshua our Savior, belong glory majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever, let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah.